We are still in the land of milk and honey. And today on the show, we follow an inspiring story of Simon Avanyu, who we visited five years ago, and bore dreams of an Apiori empire. From what we are about to learn, he isn't far behind from achieving his dream. Our first destination will be Ibanda, where it all started. Simon's story is one of a kind. At the age of 28 and dreams so big, Simon featured on NTV's Seeds of Gold, which for him was such a blessing because it opened up so many opportunities that have seen him grow himself and the business. So your investment then and now, uh, how, how would you compare the two? By then, we were having uh, uh, 45 beehives. Now we are close to 200 behinds. We were having that, that farm, that apiary, at a rented place. So now for the last five years, we have managed to buy the three places, planted these trees, mm. and of course installed hives in our own place. When we met him five years ago, Simon was just 28 years old and very enterprising. He was one of those youth that you meet and you know for sure they had a bright future. It is an honor to meet you again, Simon. You know your story, it's one of a kind, and I uh, would like you to take us briefly through, um, where, you know, through the, the journey. I am a beekeeper with 197 beehives colonized, and these hives are in three farms. And the reason why we make them in three farms is that uh, basing on the basics for beekeeping, we always focus so much on the productivity, and productivity is geared towards the effectiveness on how bees are, uh, on how beehives are colonized. Because until the hives are colonized, you cannot count yourself to having beehives. So we have different apiaries in different three places, and this is one of them. And here, we're having 94 beehives. Mm. Now, out of the 94, we have 73 with bees here. Mm. And the, uh, um, uh, it, it helps us at least to know how much we should harvest in two seasons that we are having here in Western Uganda. Uh, as you can see, we, 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 we rear bees in this format. You must make your standards the way you can see. And uh, the stand must be at the, at, at the level, at the two feet from the ground. Mm. And this makes easy for a farmer to easily access high for inspection and even in terms of harvesting it is a little bit it helps so much to know how you can access your hive check inside know what is happening and was again closed mm. for the purposes of uh, this farm we make it clean as you can see we remove much of the dust we, we we remove weeds and this is entirely for purposes of making it clear for tracing the the pests and also for example the black ants here you can easily identify them and then control them. The, the red ants and other things, so it is easy for me and the other my colleagues who, who had a pass to work here in the farm to make sure that as you can control pests and the pests affect so much the productivity. Because well, they can enter into a hive and when they enter into a hive, then they will cause bees to abscond. And when they abscond, then you are losing business. So that's why in most cases we make sure that all the beekeepers must have a standard apiary and the standard apiary must have a fence, as I said, standards of the hives, and the hives must not be painted. It is very, very crucial because we are working with insects. And insects fear, uh, uh, the, the, fear the, the paint, and paint has some elements of oil. So now, if you make your hive painted, some level you will retard the, the, uh, the availability of bees in the hive. So we intend, as much as possible, to make the wood open and even simple to attract bees as soon as possible. So we understand it's not just this. You do coordinate with, with, with other uh, beekeeping firms or beekeepers around the country? Yes, uh, of course, uh, uh, basing on, on, on our targets and our market mm -hmm. determined what we should do. Uh, in most cases, we, for us when we were starting, we used to think that we were going to have our hives, then harvest honey, mm -hmm. sell it and, and stop it. But later, we realized that there are people who also needed the services that we could do, the people who needed the, the products that we, that we had. Mm. And it has helped us really to, to link up to, to 3,964 beekeepers mm. by, by 2022. And these 
are scattered within a coverage of, of 16 districts and those 16 districts we are having people whom we have trained supported with the right inputs and these inputs range from beehives, smokers, uh, buckets for harvesting, mm -hmm. uh, protective wear and other things that we, do, uh, we are sure of, of, of making and supplying to the right persons. Mm -hmm. Then we give them the right use in terms of how they should use them. Then after they have used them, we, we buy whatever they harvest and that's what we process, package and save in addition to what we harvest in our own apiaries. Okay, so would you say that the people you've been training, that's how you're able to coordinate in all these 16 districts? Yes, because the, uh, actually our, 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 our coordination ranges on, is, is the market driven. Yeah. For us, uh, after we have uh, explored more markets, basing on the qualities and the quantities of the honey we use to give people, people have liked what we give them. Mm. And we, uh, now of course they approached us, and upon in the format of approaching us, of course we are forced now, of course, to, to work with them. Yes. <laughs> we had no shortcut. Tell us about the markets for the various products that you have. Uh, we, we currently we have markets that are ranging between three. Mm. We are having uh, products, BI products, that is honey. And honey is also in two formats. We have honey which is in combs, we fed it in combs, mm. the way we extract it from hives. Also have the honey that we feed it up. We also have uh, beeswax as, an, as another product which we, the, the, of course, the other honey that we filter, we, we, we process it, then the, the remain, the residues, we, we process them also, and they form beeswax. Yeah. Then we also have another product, which we call propolis, it is the black gum from the beehives. Yeah. Also we process it and, and set it into either capsules or we set it into, into tincture form. Yeah. Then we also have another line of products, which we, which we manufacture inputs. For example, like the beehives, these protective wares, we have smokers, we have um, uh, buckets, like uh, the buckets we use for harvesting, that's an, another line of product. We also have another line where we sell the, the, the seedlings. This is done strictly to support the, the feeding of the bees. Because these days people have interfered so much with the environment. And of course, it poses a, a, a case to worry mm -hmm. in the future on how the bees will survive. Because sometime back, people used it to, to, ha to, to neglect bushes, and mm. then the bees used to take that chance and get some, something to eat. But now, due to cases of uh, uh, land Degradation. uh, degradations, and uh, of course, uh, clearing of the bushes, yes. and f people making farms, it has made uh, the, the world bare. And, uh, and now, for us in beekeeping, we are worried of yeah. what will happen. So we support people with seedlings of eucalyptus, seedlings of uh, vacado, for example, has vacado, mm. with mangoes, um, uh, eucalyptus trees like this. We also support them with the uh, coffee seedlings. And these, at certain time, tea, they flower. When they flower, the then they they, they 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 produce uh, uh, food for bees. Of course, the bees will suck in the nectar and other and another. Then they will help us to to, to 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 raise amount of honey mm -hmm. that we we shall harvest from the hives. Yeah. So how do you ensure the good quality of of, of the honey? Uh, um, of course, quality of the honey is 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 best from a, an apiary like here. Mm. Of course, the cleanliness matters. You we we maintain the cleanliness. Of course, cleanliness will determine how how much you will harvest, and even the 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 the, the, the quality that you will sell to people. Mm. And in this, we make sure that whenever you're going to harvest, you have three buckets. These buckets, they help us to sort the honey at the hive. In that, the one bucket is for sorting the, the, the dark combs. Second bucket is, is, is for the, the white combs, which are either capped or not capped. Then the, the other bucket, is, the third one, is for the honey that is strictly mature. Mm. And that helps to, to regulate honey that we process and package. Because those grades determine uh, uh, how, how much uh, uh, moisture content you will get, they determine how much viscous content of the honey you will get, they determine how uh, the, the, matu the maturity of the honey will get. And if you don't do it from the hive, it might be harder for you to get what you expect to get. Mm. Yeah. This is quite a lesson and experience. So let me get some tips on how to harvest honey. Come with me as Simon takes us through. Wow, you really need the smoke. We're going to open a hive. Eh? Mm. There are things we focus on. You must, you must come with the bees. Mm. following the entrance, the other side. Mm. Then as, as he's coming the bees, we intend to make sure that the queen 
is not giving orders to the rest of the bees to fight mm. that yet again. Now what happens is that if you come with the bees the other side, the queen because it's weaker, it will not it will be the first one to get uh, uh, to come down. By the time it come it is come down, it will not give orders. If it doesn't give orders, the bees will result eating honey. Mm. And when they eat honey, then that means that they will become satisfied and they will not fight mm. so much. And that's why sometimes their, their side it is done for almost between five to ten minutes. Mm. That's why some people can harvest honey at one, at two during the day mm. Bec when they have they, they have done the right procedures and the bees will not fight. Mm. Even if somebody is in five feet out of you are supposed to make sure that the smoke is, is scattered all over mm. the hive. Mm. To make sure that if there are other bees that are surrounding the hive they are they are also they they, they say they smell the sense of the smoke mm. and if they sense the sense of the smoke then they don't fight so much mm. that's why this uh, i said that's why i said earlier that this is a gun that will help you to do what you're supposed to be getting mm. and the bees keep on giving us what we want mm. yes now you see what it has done what has done now the, the sound has changed so that means that to some level now they are they, they, they are they are calm down they are, they, they, they have raised their hands yeah. so that that's, that's how they respond so that the bees can now get to the other side then you open the hive yes. when you are harvesting during the day you must make sure that you are you are two people a minimum of two people because mm. if you are alone then in case one smoker gets that off mm. then you have problems to the community mm. so you make sure that at least you are two or if you are not if you are not two at, we, we guide you at least to harvest at night. Mm. I mean, you cannot effectively harvest if you are one. Mm. You need to get a helper who can help you to get the buckets, to cut the combs. In case of anything, then you, you harvest effectively. Mm. We, put, uh, we put dry cow dung, mm. fire, and, uh, and on top, we, 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 use, we use wet leaves. Mm. And the wet leaves are helping us to to filter the the scent mm. of the smoke. We will go for a very short break, and when we return, we will also visit the processing unit and confirm that Simon is not just about lip service. Welcome back from the break and glad you're still watching. What started as a dream five years ago for Simon is now a reality. So we were here five years ago. Uh, what impact uh, did, did our profile on you, on NTV Seeds of Gold, have on the business? Uh, thank you so much. We, we appreciate NTV so much because yeah, I don't know. Had it not been NTV, I don't know where we would be, some level because we got a very big coverage of the people who called us. And uh, I think 90% of the community outreaches, the sales that we did, they were stemmed from there. Because mm -hmm. people could tell us, we have seen, we have seen your advert on, on NTV, what? And it helped us really mm -hmm. to, 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 to generate much of the, of the customer. Mm -hmm. And of course, client that, that helped us to buy honey, inputs, and even uh, uh, approached us for the what? for the guidance, technical mm -hmm. guidance in terms of how visa should be run, establishment of, of, of APRs like this. So the, the, the show helped us to get, to, I, I think by then we were working with 59 beekeepers. Mm -hmm. So within two years, our coverage ran from, from 59. Oh, it's, uh, oh, it's inside. It's <laughs> close, close, close. <laughs> My ear is on fire. <laughs> hey, Murumi. Okay. Mm. <laughs> no, do this, do this. So it can, can step here and then hit you. Mm. Okay. Oof. So it was rather careless of me to take the protective gear off as I just got stung by a bee. So we are going to keep this on so that we are safe and sound. 
occupational hazards in apiary are inevitable, as I learned the hard way, after a rather painful sting. But turns out, it could be good for you, according to Simon's expertise. Yes, of course, it is good to be stung by a bee. Mm. And in most cases, we, one should, should get stung at least thrice a month, <laughs> if not twice. A sting makes somebody uh, uh, body's immunity to be motiv uh, to be improved mm. m uh, f five times than f eating fruits, and oh. it can be can be read from the what from internet. So, but of course, the sting should not exceed five to ten. Uh, uh, of course, uh, when we come to beekeeping basics, safety is very key because you don't know what will happen when somebody has been stung. Their people react to different. When you are coming here, you make sure that your safety gears are on for time until you finish working with the bees. And even after you finish, at least make them for more than 30 minutes to one hour. To avoid cases of being stung and of course causing havoc at the community. We are now here in Mbara Katete, where Simon set up a processing unit for honey. Delta Bees Uganda Limited. By the way, he owns the place and has even bigger plans for it. You are welcome to Delta Bees, and uh, this is uh, our, our head office so far. Of course, our reception sits here. Uh, we are having a display for the, some of the products that we do. Mm. And uh, we have, for example, honey in different sizes. Of course, we, we mind about to quality so much. Mm. As, as, as I will be showing you in the processing unit, yeah. we source honey in combs only. And the reason why we source honey in combs is because we don't want to, we, we try to limit the cases of adulteration. Mm. For example, this one, this is beeswax. Mm. As I told you that we, we, we got a partner to work with, to work with in, in Denmark, is intending to buy beeswax from us and we already have a contract starting with, with Apple of this year. Mm. And uh, we, we have it molded in this format. Then we are having this smoker. This is the smoker we use it to calm the bees. Basing on these hives, they give us average of 8 to 12 kilograms. Mm. But in rare cases, we get 15, 14, and, and, and uh, well, sometimes you can even get 17. As I told you that we have field operations, we work with farmers in the organized groups, even in, we do trainings, we do consultancy, we do monitoring and capacity building, our staff sits here. Mm. So in this store, it is strictly for uh, inputs. We use this for, for removing the bees. Mm. When, you, when you get the, 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 the bar, the bar and for example, you we have to remove the bees, such mm. that the bees cannot go with honey in the same bucket. Our, our, our main boardroom, we use this for our daily meetings. So this is my office. I sit here also. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, is, this is where I sit mm. and make sure that at least uh, we handle uh, our business mm. activities. So all of this can be printed and given them a receipt or basing on how much they delivered to us, if the payment was made, was done, if it was not done, we, we put even the dates of when we agreed to pay that person. It looks like this, and uh, the pricing. So we have another store here. This store is, uh, is for now beehives. Of course, as you know, hives are barque. We cannot make hives and then we store them. Mm. So we store them in this format. So for a farmer to be ready, they must use seasoned timber. So the reason why we do st uh, storage of this timber is to make sure that we give them ample time to dry very well. Of course, we have we have other more two stores. We have a store in Hoima, we have a store in Udubilizi, mm. and we uh, have also a store in uh, Kavianda. And those, those head pass now to reach our farmers there mm. in case of they want hives, they can easily access. Of course, with, with buckets, with the Small cars, everything is there. We buy honey the way you are seeing it. After we have given back it to the farmers, then they harvest. After harvesting the honey, then they put it there. It, we, as I told you, that in all the branches, we are having village-centered 
collection centers where people deliver their honey, mm. our staff collects them to our nearest office in the, in the, in the village. Now, if the, the, if the combs become dark, we don't buy that honey mm. because it will, conform, it will not conform to our standards and quality, then it, we, we may, we, it might be hard for us to sell that honey. We are still looking forward to making sure that at least we focus on, on production because much of our honey is sold in this format. So by, by the time you come to visit us again, you'll find a, a very big machine here. <laughs> Sometimes we have better orders or bigger orders. Mm. So we have it, for example, like this, mm. filtered. It's already filtered? Yes, this is filtered. So we, we use this. Now we, we, we get this filtered one mm. and set it in the other tank. So it is very risky to transport honey in, in, in the in buckets. For some time back, we made some roses. So in a jerry can, in, in case it, get, it can crack, it gets crack, it can still manage. And every jerry, every jerry can that we sell, it, give, we, it has to be 30 kilograms. That's mm -hmm. a, a minimum standard for, for honey. We are using this as our workshop currently. Mm -hmm. So we realize that it is going to be expensive for us to have a workshop here that makes our timber only. So it is in the town, we, we take these, we take these uh, timber there, they blend mm -hmm. them, then we bring them here, we cut, join, and make. Mm -hmm. Like the way you are seeing, this is what have been, this what has been made as of now. They are trying to make these frames. Our expert opinion is brought to you by Bicola Chemical Industries, and our expert is none other than Simon himself, who happens to be one of the biggest beekeepers in the region. Now that we are out of danger, I need to know what the different buckets are at harvest time. So while harvesting uh, the, the honey, uh, I noticed the multiple buckets. Why do you have about three buckets? Uh, okay, <coughs> thank you so much. Basing on the current trends of business in honey, uh, uh, people want to know uh, the sourcing of the honey, and of course they want to, they value so much the quality. Mm. So. Uh, you cannot control the quality at the processing unit. You must control the quality at the harvesting time. Mm. That's why we advise every farmer or us beekeepers, each farmer must have at least three buckets. One bucket we put <coughs> the, the black combs. Mm. Because the, in the hive, they, there are three things. There are three types of combs. There are combs which are dark in color. There are, there are combs which are white. But white, we also have those ones which are sealed, like sealed combs and the ones which are white but not sealed. So all the three the, the categories of, of combs uh, produce different colors of the honey. And, uh, and the current buyers, they prefer the color because the color, uh, the, 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 the color type of the honey fetches a lot of demand on the market. And then the hives, mm. what particular timber do you use to build the hives? What's the best? For the honey, for the current beekeeping trends in Uganda, we must use specific uh, timber to get bees in the time that we want it, mm -hmm. also to get to, to invest in the business once for some good time. And in, in that we use a hardwood only. Of course hardwood, when it dries up, it will not, it will not smell. And then that means that when the bees have entered, then they will, they will take longer into the hive and the beekeeper will benefit much in the hive than using soft wood, which, that, which sometimes deforms. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, sometimes if you use soft wood, in the when it is dry and the, and the, when it rains, the, the edges the edges tend to open up, mm -hmm. and then it will make the, the hive have many holes, and and then they will make the bees put honey in different corners. And when they put honey in different corners, the harvest the time for harvesting will reach, and the beekeeper will harvest honey in one corner and assume that honey is off, and yet it is in a different corner. Secondly, the bees the bees which live in hardwood hive take longer for the, a farmer might use it for like four to five years before they change it, they change mm -hmm. the, the species of the, of the <coughs> bees in that hive. So somebody must use specific, specific types of timber like, like omusa, yeah? like inkuzanyana, like those hardwood, mm -hmm. like cord which you use for making boats. Those specific 
timber, make the bees enter honey, enter the hive in a faster rate, and then the beekeeper will generate a lot oh. of income. Well, maybe the sting was worth it, maybe it wasn't. That's our show for today. I, for one, will stay here as the smoke comes down the bees around me so that we don't have to take it to the neighbors and cause havoc. Join us again next week as we look at other farmers. Don't forget to keep the comments coming in. Hashtag NTV Seeds of Gold. Thank you for watching and have a great weekend.